That was all my playlist. Very repetitive. So you're an 80s rock right. guy. I know. I just said rock and country. Go ahead. Uh, well, I'm, I'm a little befuzzled. I mean, you took my question. Kayla, let's go, Kayla. Come on. Yeah, She's sitting there ahead, waiting. Kayla. Next man up. Okay. Uh, you guys getting ready to, to head over to Minnesota for joint practices. How different is this week just preparing for some practice over there and then going straight to that preseason game? Well, I mean, I think we've done it before, but I also appreciate the way that they were able to come out today and practice and transition inside. I thought that there was good energy. I thought there was good speed. Uh, we got a lot done, you know, so then we'll have to transition on to traveling tomorrow. I appreciate, you know, Joey, his staff, Todd, his staff, be able to, you know, get all that stuff packed up here, turned around short amount of time, uh, and then get us everything that we need up in, in Minnesota. What did you do to make room for Josh Thompson? Uh, Josh was on the roster. And we, he counted. Josh was counting. Just like Caleb Farley and Dylan Radins. You mentioned yesterday about uh, Levis, like, let the game come to him a little bit more. Is that, uh, I mean, like, maybe not forcing? Yeah, just something? taking what they give you, you know what I mean? Getting the flow of things and, you know, kind of seeing the, the different rotations. And when you see, you know, them drop out of there in Tampa and maybe, you know, just being okay to take the check down and put, put the ball in the. You know, backs hands and, and let them work for you and see if they could tackle and see if we can break a tackle and um, you know just those things. How much, of that, how much of that comes from just being able to trust what he's seeing with his eyes and what he's studied on film? Well, I would say that the film is much different. You know, I think that it's it's much different just from my experience of you know watching our tape, watching other people's tape, standing behind the the quarterbacks or being on the sidelines, it, it's much different. So the, the, the really true reps are obviously the practice reps that are critical and then, then the game reps. Uh, that that Go ahead, Jimmy. Good to have Thompson back. And is he kind of in a return to play uh, protocol? Maybe well, you know, play? Josh's main main role right now is going to be to just get back and get rolling on uh, on special teams. We had a, you know, a vision for him to be, you know, you know, one of our core special teams players. It's kind of where he was last year. and so. That's kind of where he started today. That's kind of what he did. It was you know, good to see him out there. I know he was excited to be out there. That rotation that, that you had with the quarterbacks uh, last week, is that something that, that you've seen a lot, or, or is that pretty rare to you know, have a, a competition playoff like that? With as far as, as, like, as, the, far as series, the series? series the, yeah, the series, as opposed to a quarter or a half. I, I, I don't know. That's just the way we decided to do it. Um, May do it differently next week, may not, I'm not sure, but that's what we felt like was, was best. Chris Moore said Ryan's so good at helping teach the new concepts of the offense, it feels like he almost helped design it. What's it say about a quarterback to be able to, to pick it up so quickly and, and to kind of have that level Well, I think of that that's the leadership. That's what you have to have from your quarterback. That's, they're the ones that have to act uh, as an extension of the coach on the field. You know, They're the ones that hear the play call. They're the ones that have to know where everybody's supposed to line up. They're they're the ones that make the jet the adjustments, the checks, you know. So that that's critical. Once once we send them out there on the field, you know, it's up to the players to, to figure it out. So and, and to fix problems and and you know work through it and then come back in the huddle, a short amount of time and, and do it all over again and recognize what the situation is. How's Trey Avery continue to come along? Um, you know, I think Trey's you know, competed since the day he got here. I think that's the biggest thing that you notice about him. He doesn't say a whole lot. Um, kind of lines up, keeps playing. And uh, you know, hopefully he can build on what he's been doing and, and continue to do it in the games. And you know, Good on special teams for us last year. Was, was really good on the hold up and, and played some there on defense. And you know, came down with the football today in the red zone. And, you know, but then also had a holding call there in two minutes. So it's it's back and forth. It's, it's up and down. And, and, and Trey's, you know, always worked since the day he got here. He doesn't say a whole lot. And I think he just keeps getting better. How important has Sean's voice been in the secondary since he got here? And how have you seen him kind of help some of the other guys? Well, it, you know, as you come into a new situation as, as a free agent, you just, you know, kind of figure your, your way through this thing. I think SMB has done that. Um, he has been consistent. He's been reliable. He's been out there every day. You know, the thing I like is he can play multiple coverages, multiple techniques. It's not just, 
you know, it's not just a press man or not just an, an, an off cover three corner. He's, he's been able to, to be proficient in all the different coverages that we've been asking him to play. Tart has said that he wants to improve as a pass rusher, rusher and not just be a run plugger. How, how has he done so far in camp at that? I think okay. I mean, the biggest thing we always talk about, and Tier knows this, is this, the more conditioned and and he can be, which allows him to, to play up to our standard, the, the more he plays. And so when he does that, then he's out on the field and he can impact the game in, in different ways, whether they run it or whether they throw it. Um, so, so that's the biggest thing, is, is the more that he wants to impact the game is, is the more that he can be out there and play up to our standard and, and be conditioned and you know, use it. You know, he's, he's got good quickness, he's got good power. And uh, so hopefully he keeps working on that. What are some of the things you look for when you go about figuring out like, what your final offensive line unit is going to be? Like, how do you know when, when it's, it's, that's the case? Mm, as far as like the five or however many yeah, you keep five. or? Five, five. Well, I mean, how they, how they continue to work together. You know, using the first drive the other day as an example, it looked like there was some 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 coordination in the combination blocks looked like there was some you know, coordination in what we were doing. There was some, you know, some finish and never going to be perfect, but there's it's not jointed. It's not one guy's at this level, another guy's at this level. You know, I think we saw some of those things and, and took a good step at, you know, with that unit. Small sample size, but Peter, I guess, in particular on the line, did he look like a guy who was pretty comfortable with that guard spot as in the long series there? Yeah, I thought that Peter looked comfortable. I thought him and, and Dre worked together a couple times in combination blocks and, and you know, pass protected. He tried to stay firm there in the middle of the pocket. How do you find your trust from Peter's involved security uh, yesterday? Was he carrying it loose or was it, did it come out at some point? That well, no, I just, you know, reference the stiff arm as great as the stiff arm is. You know, we have to make sure when we're, we're making cuts or we're making, you know, doing something to avoid uh, tackles, you know. It's like Chris. It's never the guy that you, you know, see. It's the one you don't see. It's you know, second guy in on Wiley, and on and on and on. Plays with Jackson in his first game yesterday. Yeah, I mean, Kyrus, um, you know, did some nice things. You know, he was able to to help us there on the kickoff return. Was able to to make some catches there. I thought he continues to try to play with some speed, and you know, all those young receivers that keep earning opportunities. Do you think he could be on special teams when the kick return? Um, yeah, I mean, the kick, we, we got blocked for somebody. I think that's the hardest skill around the league is you got to block for him. And so I think there's plenty of guys that can do it. it it's it's finding 10 other guys that can block. Mike, in what ways have you seen Chiggs step up as a, a leader in, in the tight end room this season? Well, Chiggs got a, uh, you know, there's there's a personality to him. There's a there's an energy to him, and I think that's what you know we need each and every day. I think that that's what that room needs each and every day. Um, you know, just his you know coming into his second year, maybe explaining how important special teams are to to helping these young guys find a role. Um, but but Jig's personality is such that you know every day we need that kind of energy. We need him bouncing around and. You know, I'm confident we'll get that. What makes kick return blocking the hardest skill around the league? Well, a lot of space, a lot of speed. You know, guys are guys are coming down from, you know, 30, 40 yards. Um, and, and you got a couple different ways. You, get, you can go around them, you know, over the top, back door, or, or through them. And so that's um, you know, that's that's just a, a, a difficult task um, with, with space and the athletes that you're you're trying to block with. And it's you know, something that you got to keep repping. It's something that goes into the timing and the depth of how far you're dropping, taking great angles. Um, you know, if you don't take a good angle, the guy beats you, um, you know, over the back door. If you go too deep, then he comes over the top. And if you're sitting there too light, you know, Jonathan Ward had a good example of that where he you know, drove the guy right back into the returner and they held him. And you know, that, that's a critical penalty. So. I think it's just a tough skill from, you know, trying to find the body types that have those types of movement skills and reactionary um, agility and the ability to block. What you guys like about Pico, I guess, and see 
back with the team here? Um, yeah, you know, we've had some experience with them, so, you know, needed a body. You know, Shaquille Brown will, will go on IR, and um, unfortunately, so we, we, we needed somebody, and, and, you know, Kyle has some experience here and, and has played. Uh, you taking the entire team to kick off lunch tomorrow? Maybe why is it important to, to do that before going out of town? Well, trying to trying to work it into our schedule will absolutely be there. You know, team will be there and you know try to help the charitable foundation, try to um, interact with with our season ticket members or whoever's going to be there, and you know hopefully we'll be able to the rookies will be able to entertain us a little bit. You guys, good. So how nice is it, Amani, to be going back home uh, at, for, for, for not just a game, but for a couple of practices? And do you have to maybe tune out some of the family friend noise so that you can do business? Um, yeah, it's going to be awesome um, to go back home, um, have people that I grew up with, uh, friends and family, ex-teammates, um, ex-coaches, be able to you know come to hopefully a practice and be able to see me compete um, in person. And I mean, for me, I've always had family or friends at my game. So I mean, I, blanking out the noise, that's, that's no problem. Kid. Um, I think I went to one when I was really little, but not not often, not a lot. Yeah, you know. got some good skill players. How much of a test will this be for, for your defense and these joint practices? It'll be a good out. test. Um, it'll be good for guys to go up against different body types, um, different skill skill sets as well. Um, it'll be a great challenge for us, and we're going to take it head on. Were you a Vikings fan growing up as a kid? I actually wasn't. My dad's from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, so I grew up a, a Brett Favre Packers fan. This, this, this whole time, so I'm actually a Packers fan growing up until until I got drafted by the Titans, of course. What's, hey, what's made Avery, Troy Avery successful here? You've been around for a couple of years now, ability to make plays out here, and then he made another one on Saturday. Um, you know, one thing I see from Trey is his, his um, competitiveness. Um, he's going to compete no matter what. Um, he gives up a catch. He's really good at uh, moving on to the next play and just continuing to play, not letting the play before carry over, and now it's making two bad plays in a row. He's good at if he has a mess up, he forgets it and continues to play on, and he has good ball skills as well. Um, very intense. I mean, guys are trying to make a team. Guys are understand that they're going against a new a new guy. Um, they understand that the um, competitiveness is high. Um, you got guys that want to come out here and make plays, and you know that they're trying to do the same thing on the other end. And you don't want to be, you know, that guy that's going around viral when you get done practicing. You look on Twitter, and your guy caught the ball. So the same time you, you, you're probably not playing in any of these games. This is this is what gets you ready for the regular season, isn't it? These, these joint practices. Yeah, joint practice. Yeah, it's time where, like you, like I said, going against different skill sets. Um, you might go against Chig. He might run a route different than T.J. Hawkinson will run a route. So it'd be good just to not just for me and K.B. but for younger guys to see you know, what the joint practice is like and to see the competitiveness it is is because it's very similar to the games. TJ, did you guys stay in touch a lot since college? Um, yeah, I had him up here and there. Um, I know if he if he had got engaged or if something happened, I'd reach out to him and talk, but not like so much every every week or nothing like that. But. How personal does it get with the DBs and the wide receivers when, when you have that seven on seven time in the joint practice? Um, it's very personal. Um, I mean, because we want to show what, what our standard is. We want to show who we are as a DB group. And you know that's we want to make sure we win at at all, at all costs. How's a guy like? How, what have you seen out of a guy like Eric Garrett, who showed up big in the game Saturday and has had, had a couple of pass breakups out here today? Um, he's a guy like I said. He's a similar to Trey Avery. He competes. Um, he, he's a dog. He's gonna fight. He might not be the biggest um, biggest guy, but he's gonna compete. He's gonna get feisty with you. And then you saw him come up in the run game and make some good tackles in the game as well. You've been involved a lot of joint practice since you've been here. I mean, what what's the balance like in trying to be? physical and play with intensity and not have it spill over to, to a brawl. Yeah, I mean, that just comes getting, getting to that edge. Um, you know, a guy might be cussing in your face, screaming in your face, but you have to be able to take it to an edge and then be able to pull off. Because in the game, we can't have those, you know, personal foul penalties. Now we're hurting the team. That's the stuff that we got to, now's a good time to practice that. What kind of test does Justin Jefferson present for you all in that practice? Justin Jefferson, I mean, he's getting one of the best receivers in the league, if not the best. Um, I know my guys Christian, Roger, and SMB are going to do a great job of challenging him, competing, and it's going to be real fun this week. Along those lines, how much scout work do you guys do before the practices? Um, we haven't started yet, so we'll see what happens um, the rest of today and tomorrow. I mean, I mean, yeah, I will, I'll, I'll take my, by myself and watch the preseason game just to see what, like I said, what guys' styles are like, the way they move, and kind of just get a little feel before I head down there. You guys are aware it's, it's the 
your head coach's birthday and with Ben Jones not around here, does anybody have the nerve to, to pull a prank? Uh, I'm not sure if anyone has the nerve to, to do it. If anyone were to do it, I think it'd be Chig. I think Chig's be the, the guy to do it. I'm going to have to mention it to him. Do you have anything up his sleeve? Um, I'm not sure. We'll see. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. Amani, we've seen in the past, um, sometimes the starters don't go on the road you know, for mm. these preseason games. But obviously, last weekend you guys did. And how much do you take it upon yourself to kind of coach the guys up on the sideline? Um, I mean, it means a lot because uh, when I played, when I was a rookie and I had, you know, Kenny Vaccaro, KB and Logan Ryan on the sideline when we played the Eagles my first game, that, that meant a lot to me because I wanted to show those guys that I can play, um, not just the coaches. So, I mean, my job was just to go out there, wherever I can help out at, you know, just be encouragement for my teammates. It's a challenge of a guy like, a, like a Mike Brown, really hasn't played many defensive snaps in the league, but, you know, kind of learning defensive aspect mm -hmm. there instead of just special teams. And Maybe also what your thoughts were on against the, against the Bears. Yeah, Mike Brown's been having a great camp. He had a great OTAs. Um, he's a guy that's been standing out. Um, and as you saw in the game and on special teams as well. I mean, he went down there and knocked the ball out on the muff punt. And then he's doing a great job on defense. And, you know, you don't have that many games in your belt. So you have to treat the practices as similar to games as best as you can. Where's the one place or the one thing you want to take guys to go do while you're up there? Say, say it one more time. Where's the one place or maybe the one thing you want to take guys while you're up um, I would say, see, I haven't been there in a long time, but I'd probably say Mall of America for the guys that, that haven't gone yet. I, I'd probably say that before 6 p.m. 6, <laughs> 6, 6 p.m. you might not want to be there, but mall, that's the big mall. Yep, yep, no yep. Paisley Park? Say it again. No Paisley Park? Uh, no Paisley, maybe Valley Fair. Valley Fair is like an uh, amusement park that's uh, kind of south of the city. Oh, wait, yeah, that too, right. Go there. I haven't gone there before, but I've been around the neighborhood. Yeah. Yep. What's in that mall? Is this giant? I mean, there's like three, three Foot Lockers. There's like a Macy's. <laughs> there's like, there's like a double of everything. Yeah, they got that amusement park in there. It's like a um, Nickelodeon park inside. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. What happens yep. after 6 p.m.? Does it just get crowded? It just, you know, you just don't want to be around. I don't know. It just kind of gets bad out there. <laughs> you know, it's, just, <laughs> it's better. It's just better off leaving before six. Yeah. Show these for the right. And what's the food of choice if you got to try out there? Oh, food of choice. Mmm. Let me think. Besides a Juicy Lucy? You get a Juicy Lucy. That's a good one, too. That's a good one, too. A lot of, a lot of people, when I was coming up, my high school would go to Cane's. Cane's right in the um, University of Minnesota campus. It's Cane's Chicken. Yeah. Yep. That, too. <laughs> see, see? <laughs> see, can't go wrong with a lot of it. All right, thank you guys. What's going on? How'd you feel like the quarterbacks handled the alternating series? Situation? Yeah, I think I think they uh, did a good job handling it. Um, you know, uh, both had had some some really good plays. Both had some some good opportunities to be able to learn from some of the performance stuff. But uh, in terms of the rotation, they did a great job handling that. Yeah, he uh, he played faster um, on on Saturday, which was good. That was the big thing that that we talked to him about is we wanted him to make sure that you know he played to his his time speed. So um, he played fast. Uh, you know, his decision making was better. He he appeared to play on time uh, more so than than what we've seen in his previous game exposure. So uh, I thought Malik took a good step forward here on Saturday. Some of the positive you saw from any game. What are some things that obviously showed you still a rookie? Yeah, um, you know, there's there's some things. Uh, obviously, now having a live pass rush, uh, knowing when we need to step up. Um, uh, you know, when when the journey's over, when we may have to ditch one. Um, uh, but but you look at his ability to be able to get the ball out when when he was playing on time. You know what I mean? He had some really good throws for us. Um, and, and and again, it's it's a it's a good learning situation for him to be able to come back in here today, be able to watch it, uh, now get a, a a true understanding as to why why we're doing things a certain way. Um, and and again, looking forward to see his growth here from game one to game two. Is that really the only way to improve that kind of feel? Is to get those live game reps preseason or practices? yeah? I think you know obviously. Uh, the more live reps you can get, the the better off you're going to be with that. You know, it's it's a different deal when those guys can actually hit you. Um, in in terms of being able to feel the pocket and being able to step up and maneuver within the pocket. Um, and so yeah, I think the the live bullets you get there are are invaluable. Yeah, 
Yeah. Uh, you know, he, he's uh, first of all, he's got to continue to focus on ball security and, and just do a good job with that. Um, but, yeah, you saw his ability to stick his foot in the ground. Um, you know, he, he showed that he can be a hard tackle out in the open field. Um, and, and he caught the ball the one time the ball found him. So, uh, you know, very, very pleased with Tajay. And, again, looking forward to him to continue to improve here. How about the offensive line, the first movement in that one series that they got? How did you like what they were able to do? Yeah, they, they kept Malik clean. Um, they were able to push some piles. They were able to get some movement uh, in, the, in the run game. And, and again, the more that those guys are going to be able to play and, and gel together, the better off we're going to be. So uh, I thought they all individually did some good things and, and collectively as a unit um, did what we asked them to do. Uh, we wanted them to play physical. We wanted them to kind of set the tone and, and put our brand of football on tape. Uh, we wanted them to keep the quarterback clean, clean, and I think they did all three things. Where's Ryan right now? And, He's uh, in the locker room. Go ahead. <laughs> As far as what? As, as far as mastery of the offense, control of, of everything. I feel great. I feel great with where he's at. Um, you know, being able to sit in there and just in, in watch our tape, um, you know, kind of watch the film of the defense and, and, what, and what we're expecting. Uh, what we're expecting if you see A, B, and C in terms of the different coverages. Um, and, and I think he's doing a really good job of playing on time. Uh, and then, again, like, as we get going here with the situation, just looking forward to him continuing to grow there. And, and uh, you know, he's, he's been on the money with his decisions, and I think he's missed a throw or two. But other than that, he's, he's been playing pretty good for us. How important is it to work against the new front liners coming up this week with the Vikings as far as I imagine these joint practices will be your most extensive work for some of these guys. Where, they, where can they benefit most? Yeah, anytime you get to go against another team, I think that's, that's crucial. Um, you know, it's going to be good for us to be able to go up there and see some different things schematically, um, and in terms of in terms of what we've been seeing from Shane and, and what we're anticipating seeing uh, up there, uh, and and just being able to go against players that have different skill sets. Um, you know, that, that's that's a big part of it. As the opponents change each and every week, uh, got to be able to kind of adapt to what we're doing and how we're going to attack them, and in, in in how you know individually we need to put ourselves in the best position possible. So, um, it, it's going to be good. It's going to be a good challenge. Uh, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, continuing to, to grow, continuing to protect the football. We've got to do a better job with that. Can't turn the ball over, um, you know, first and foremost. So we've got to protect the football. We've got to do a better job with our ball security within the pocket. And then just continuing to play on time and play within the system. But in, in the joint practice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. same deal. Like uh, the decision making in terms of, in terms of uh, uh, you know, not, jam not jamming balls into tight windows, um, being able to be accurate when, when there's people around you, all those different things are going to come up in those. Wiley, his first NFL game, probably didn't go like he wanted to. How do you, how do you kind of deal with that with him? Yeah, he's got another chance to come out there and get better today. That's the biggest thing is that our, our guys need to need to understand that, you know, that was a learning opportunity for him. Um, and so there's going to be things that as, as we talked to Josh this morning and this afternoon and as we move forward here, um, sit, you know, same deal with the quarterbacks. Like, hey, this is why we emphasize, you know, these things during, during the week of practice. Uh, and, and we got to see the things that we do on the practice field translate on Saturdays or Sundays, you know, during the season. Um, I, the, the biggest thing is just continuing to, to, to get him to grow and, and get him reps and, and continue to let him play fast. What are you looking forward to uh, offensively from the growth from one game to the next uh, in preseason? Uh, I couldn't hear the question. I'm sorry. What are you looking forward to in terms of the offense and trying to look at the seat? from the offense from one game to the next. Yeah, protect the ball. I mean, you can't win any games in the NFL turning the ball over four times. So that that's paramount. we got to do a better job making sure that we're not exposing the football. Um, got to do a better job of making sure we're taking advantage of, of a short field. Right, Our defense did a good job um, creating some turnovers, uh, and we got to do a better job being able to take advantage of that. So those would be the two major areas that we want to improve on. So you coach both upstairs and downstairs during your careers OC, and, and have you settled where you think you'll be this season, and maybe what's the benefit of being <coughs> there? So. Yeah, I'll be wherever wherever Coach Frabel wants me to be. Um, you know, being able to, to be upstairs, you, you know, you see everything. Being able to be on the field is you you know you feel everything. So um, there's some some pros and cons to both. Uh, but wherever wherever Coach Frabel wants me to be, that's where I'll be. Tim, with uh, Chick being like the, the guy, main guy in the, the tight end room now, have you? seen him grow as a, a leader and if so what does that look like in the building and maybe interacting with the other guys in the room? Yeah, it's been it's been good uh, you know 
having Chig kind of share his experience in the first first year with some of the rookies, um, some of the lessons that he learned, you know, uh, and, and being able to kind of pass that knowledge off uh, to some of the younger guys. Um, in terms of his leadership style, like his, he's just, you know, the smile is contagious. You, you feel his energy whenever you talk to him. Um, and, and that's been great to see that walk around the building and being able to, to communicate with him and just know that, that when he's here, he loves football, he loves the work, he loves the process. Um, and, and I think that's the biggest thing that as far as being a leader, just being able to continually do that day in and day out. Nicholas, uh, Pete Frere, you know, been handling this situation. And it'd be tough in, in, like in a game situation where you're playing with guys that you really haven't played with before. Uh, well. Yeah, um, you know, you're right. Nick's in a, a unique situation here. Um, he's, he's, doing, he's doing, you know, what he can in order to be able to kind of block out the distractions. Um, and, and just trying to take advantage of every rep that he's getting here, knowing kind of what's what, what's coming down here in a couple of weeks. But um, I mean, he's here every day. He's working. He's putting the work in. And again, just looking looking for him to continue to take advantage of the reps that he's getting during, during these practices. How do you evaluate uh, some of the backup offensive linemen? <laughs> maybe, maybe who who did well? Who uh, maybe needs to clean some things? So. Yeah, I think I think you could probably go down the line and say they all did some good things and they all did some bad things. The biggest thing is that we just need to continue to to focus on playing our style of football, being physical. Uh, I think the one run Hassan had, um, it would have been in the second quarter in the in the low red, right? They had a really good pile push. Corey was there. You know what I mean? You, you saw X kind of come up, and 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 that's the stuff that we want to see consistently. Um, and then. We need to we need to continue to, to improve on protecting the quarterback. Now a lot of that, however many we had, I think we had eight. I think half of them at least were were due to you know quarterback issues there. We got to get the ball out on time. Um, but just continuing to work uh, the different techniques that that we're using, um, and, and hopefully we can continue to see the improvements that we see during practice on on the game tape. Been, I know he played a lot of different spots as you work with him through camp. How do you do a tackle? Yeah, I mean he's he's. A big joker when he's out there, right? So he's big. Uh, he plays hard. He tries to play physical. He doesn't try to play physical. He does play physical. Um, and so when he was out there, you know, uh, he was playing against a good player, um, and and he went out there and held his own. So uh, the the good thing about Rupp is that you know he's smart. He's got different uh, position flexibility, being able to kind of play multiple spots. And so he did everything that we asked him to do on Saturday and, and, and played hard. What about receiver two, who's a receiver two who's earned himself? More opportunities based off of what he did in that game? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you look at those young guys and a couple of them flashed for us. Uh, you know, Kiaris showed up on that one long catch and run. Um, you know, uh, uh, Treshawn showed up for us uh, a couple times. Gavin had a big catch for us on, on uh, that, that drive in the fourth quarter. Uh, I, I think there's, there's positives that, that you can take from a lot of those young players there for us. Colton had a, you know, caught an odd for us on the sideline, one of the two minute drills. Um, so all of them, when the ball found them, they, they all did a good job of making making the play. Can you kind of speak to the value that Corey Levin brings to the line? Hasn't been a starter, but a guy who's been here for a while. Yeah, he's been here for a while. He's played in some games. You know, uh, he's smart. He knows everyone's job, and and, and he plays he plays the right way. Um, I, I I can't stress how important that is 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 having having a group of offensive linemen. Uh, that take pride in, in, as silly as this sounds, is blocking their guy and, and protecting the guy with the ball, whether that's the quarterback or the running back. You know, that, that's a mindset here. Um, and, and you look at the way those guys play with, with Brew, you know, with Corey, those guys take that to heart and, and everyone else kind of follows their lead. What could have, should have been better on those and how helpful to have those as teaching points at this point of the year rather than in a month? Yeah, absolutely. Not obviously not the way we wanted to start those first two drives. Um, just recognition. The first one, just recognition. Guys see it sooner, get guys triggering a little bit sooner. And then obviously the retrace. Um, I think there were some questionable decisions just over the top, underneath, some of that type of stuff. Um, but for the most part, I thought they were running. They were trying to get them down. They were chasing them to the end zone. Um, but yeah, it can't happen. Second one, really just the back leaked out on us and and uh, Fields was able to extend it enough to, to find him, you know? So just things we got to clean up. But I mean, again, I'm glad it happened in preseason, not week one. Avery made a play for you. Has he been through, uh, maybe throughout the camp? He's been good. He's been really good. He's been a guy, I think uh, all of us on our coaching staff, Chris, Book, Jay Ham, um, they've been working hard with him. I think he's developed. Um, you see his progression as we've been through camp here day in and day out. He's competing, he's challenging, and he's making some plays on the football. So it's been good for us. You talked about Monty and Gibbons competing. Monty only got seven 
snaps. What was kind of thinking there? Yeah, I think just those guys working through, rotating some guys, kind of seeing where the game's at, where we're at. So, I mean, each week preseason-wise, we're going to figure out who plays and who doesn't, how many snaps they're going to get. So, we'll kind of see where's that as we go this week. In the in the game, it seemed like Garrett showed up around the football a lot, made a lot of open field tackles. How did he look once you broke the film down? Yeah, he's been good. Um, we transitioned him to play a little bit more outside here this past week just to add a little bit of depth there. Um, he's he's a scrappy dude, right? He's he's competitive. Um, you can tell he's got a chip on his shoulder every single day. Um, he's a guy that's improved since he's been here, and we like the versatility piece of him. So hopefully that continues and he can continue to be around the football and show up in the run game. How much do you find out about your guys this week in joint practices working against some of their skill players? Yeah, it's going to be great just, uh, just to kind of gauge where we're at, right? Um, been going against the same guys for three weeks now, so I'm, I know the guys are excited to go against somebody else. Um, and really for us, just to be able to go out there and execute and see if, if everything we've been working on translates, right? Beyond the preseason, you go up and there's a lot of ones versus ones. You're getting a lot of reps there. So um, just kind of get a good gauge of where we're at. Yeah, I thought there were, there were times. Um, I think there's always some room for improvement in terms of our ability to affect the quarterback. Um, Again, didn't have a whole lot of third and long situations show up for us. They were in that mid-range quite a bit. And then on the early one with Fields, they threw a screen, right? So um, I, don't, I wouldn't say there was a ton of opportunities there for those guys, but I felt like they were trying. You, you saw some good moves individually. I think it probably got to be a little bit more consistent, but you saw, you saw some flashes from some guys. Yeah, I think uh, I think coming in that was kind of a big question mark for us. Just our depth there. Um, obviously, working Elijah back, I think that's going pretty well. I think he's getting a good grasp of it, and then and Mike's done a good job. I think special teams, he's he's done a really good job there, kind of carving out a role for himself. Hopefully, that continues, and uh, he showed up. He showed up Saturday, so hopefully that continues. I've been pleased with Mike and how he's progressed here, and I think he's he's a guy that's been a riser throughout camp that we were a little uncertain of going into it. And what about Shai and Carter? You know, he yeah, really good. good. Like Shai's always been the guy. I mean, we've had him here, just dependable. Um, I think he tried to play physical on Saturday. He tried to show up in the run game. Got to clean up some tackling stuff with him. Just I mean, a little bit undersized guy going in there to tackle at times comes into play, but the ability to show up, get out of the post and show up on plays. Um, he's just got to work on wrapping up a little bit. Chance Campbell made a couple of big plays. How's he kind of progressed through this game? Yeah, I was, it was good to see Chance out there flying around. I, th I thought he played fast. I did. There were a couple of plays I'm sure he, he'd want back, um, but he showed up doing all the right things in the right spot for the most part. Um, so hopefully he continues to perform that way because Again, I think it's a pretty deep room. It's a competitive room from the first guys to the last guys. Um, special teams are going to be vital for that room and, and those position battles. But it's good to see those guys progress and go out there and, and show the improvement they've made uh, since we've been in training camp. Who among the younger defensive linemen stood out to you? Yeah, I think uh, TK has done a great job since he's been here. He's Again, with all those young guys, it's just the consistency of it. Like you see flashes of him in the run game, using his length, playing with his hands. You see the ability to rush. So hopefully we can continue to work on the day to day and every play having that. Um, I thought that whole group battled, right? Like not having a ton of numbers there going into the game between Jaleel, between Shelvin, between Shaq before he went down. I thought I thought those guys battled for us. So um, hopefully that, that continues. I think these preseasons are huge just for the competitive aspect of trying to figure out the depth there as we get to the 53. Just, what's the adjustment been like for him from smaller school to NFL speed? Yeah, I thought, I thought he did a really good job on Saturday. Like you, you saw some good things from him. You saw him flash. I thought he was run to the football. Um, I think just like, I, I don't think the speed of the game was as dramatic as I thought it would be. Like, it is for every rookie, don't get me wrong. Um, but I didn't think that was a big issue for him. I think with him, it's just continue the reps, continue to see things, the strength, right? Working, continue to work in the weight room to get stronger. Um, but he has some ability. They have Nashville Catholic. Yeah, and Paige, I believe, has Giles County, maybe. So. 
Yeah, it should be fun. Hey, Craig, uh, I'm, I'm going to butcher his name, number 33. How did he do for you on, on putt coverage this week, and, 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 and what does he bring that gives him a chance? Yeah, I think Eric did a really good job for us uh, going back there catching punts. Um, you know, he's, he had a great career in college, and uh, we, we gave him an opportunity, um, you know, to showcase his skills, and we thought he did a really good job of coming up and catching those punts and, and getting positive yards, especially the last one where it was a key situation for us. Obviously, we're down in the fourth quarter. Uh, we put a little pressure on the punter. And, uh, you know, Eric came up and, and caught a bad punt and gained 17 yards to put our offense in a position to, um, you know, possibly go down there and score. So I was, I was really happy, and he earned an opportunity, another one, um, to go out there this week, too. What do you tell the, I guess the young kickers who maybe had some good moments, also some they probably need to improve on? Yeah, you know, that's, that's just a part of them being young. Uh, they're going to have some ups and downs. Uh, obviously, we don't want Caleb to, to go and kick the ball OB to start the second half. You know, that's one of the biggest things that we talk to our players on special teams is we have an opportunity, whether it's at the start of the game or the start of the half, to set the tone. Um, and, you know, going into halftime, he made a great kick there at the end. Uh, so we had all the momentum going into halftime. We want to keep that momentum starting the third quarter, and we just can't have the ball kicked OB. Now I can do a, a better job of helping him. Um, you know, maybe it's a ball kicked in the middle. Um, but yeah, we, we just can't have that. And you know, with Trey, uh, it's had a good camp. Um, I think just part about being young, he starts to overthink. He has a little bit of wind that goes right to left. It's in the Windy City in Chicago. He overthinks it. He aims at the right upright, and the bar ball barely moves. So that's just part of the learning process for him. But we're looking forward to them going out there and, and uh, going against Minnesota here. What did you see from Stonehouse? Yeah, uh, probably not up to his standard. Um, you know, it's interesting. He still averages 44 net, but uh, nowhere where he should be. And he's going to be the first one to tell you that, uh, you know, just one of those days for him that uh, couldn't make those adjustments. And, uh, you know, he's going to come back. He asked to punt today, so um, he wants to continue to work on it. And hopefully we'll have a better game uh, against Minnesota. Is it more get, uh, angling the punts, uh, using that sideline as the extra tackler, or is it, uh, you know, it, it look, is location the biggest issue? Yeah, I, I think there he just mishit the ball. Um, you know, he's trying to be too perfect. That That's his thing. He's got a high standard for himself. We have a high standard for him. Uh, he just tries to be too perfect. You know, we, we talk about his footwork all the time. Uh, that's that's going to be key. It's going to start out with his footwork. And it was just a little bit off. He was hopping into the ball, um, kind of made his drop just a little bit inside. So uh, those are the stuff that we'll work on today and throughout the week. With the kicks, like especially with Wolf, like how do you, what's the grading scale for those guys and how much does one kick matter in the, in the scope of things? Yeah, I mean, uh, we take every kick and, and uh, not, not necessarily grade every single kick um, because it's a body of work. Um, whether it's through the training camp and the preseason. Obviously, the preseason games are going to count just a little bit more. Um, but, you know, we'll take everything into consideration, you know, what he's done in practice, what he's done this next preseason game, um, and kind of go. And I, I still feel it's neck and neck with those guys because, uh, you know, obviously Caleb kicking the one at the end of the half was, was good. Trey made, um, you know, did a really good job on the one kickoff that he had, got the ball up in the air, uh, and we made the tackle inside the 20 yard line. So we'll continue to work those guys and, um, you know, make a decision who knows when. How crucial are these next two weeks for uh, uh, Caleb and Trey? Yeah, it, I mean, it's big. Obviously, they're, they're battling for a spot, um, gives them an opportunity to, you know, start um, in an NFL game. So uh, it's going to be a big two weeks, but we're going to handle it day by day. Um, and, and I know those guys are ready to get out there and compete again. What's some of the, uh, the biggest uh, focuses on this uh, next week in Caleb? Yeah, I mean, basically all four core, we're going to continue to see guys, uh, you know, that made some plays for us, and they're going to get more opportunities. Uh, so, you know, the biggest part is guys playing as fast as they possibly can with some technique. Um, and, you know, those guys that did really well, they're going to get that opportunity to showcase their skills again uh, this week. So it's going to be a big week for all the core guys, too. How about the Gunners uh, from being able to fight through contact and getting downfield? Who may be 
impress you there? Too? Yeah, I think, you know, when you look at the preseason, you're going to get a lot of what we call six box, where our gunners are going to go get double pressed all the time. And uh, it, it's great work for us, um, especially the gunners, because we're going to see who's going to be competitive, who's going to be able to fight, who's going to be able to use the techniques that we're teaching. Um, you know, we thought Anthony Kendall, Matt Jackson, uh, even Racy on his one did a really good job, um, whether they split them or use um, the out-of-bounds as, as a weapon for us. But, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be tough for those guys because they're all going to get double-pressed. Um, but it's a really good teaching aspect uh, that we can go off of um, and see if they can actually play for us when they get double-pressed. Oh, and only one return for Kyle. Uh, but it, it, what's his point of emphasis if he, as he kind of starts that path again to be a returner, just kind of hit it? And did he do that on Saturday? Yeah, you know, it all starts with the catch. And he did a great job of squaring up to it and catching the ball and then running and getting vertical. You know, we tell the guys we want to get the first first down. He obviously did that, made a couple moves. So we were excited to him to be out there and, and make a play.